I am now creating weekly exclusive content for Patreon, so if you are interested in that, go check out the link down below. And of course, if you want to avoid the random lottery of FIFA points, you want to go straight to the source, buy the players directly, use u7buy.com and use the code TVM at checkout. What is going on guys, Tim here, welcome back to another Team of the Season prediction. Today, it is the EFL. Last year, they released this with the community vote and uh, it was quite pathetic really because the upgrades were uh, very minimal and they didn't release that many players in fairness. So I'm kind of hoping we get a bigger and better promo uh, or set of EFL players this time. It took me hours to compile this list, which we're going to kick off with Alex Palmer with 110 saves and 14 clean sheets for Plymouth this season so far. Uh, like I said, it took me hours to compile this list, so hopefully I get at least one player. That's, that's all I'm going for. I just want one player. Paul Farman, 126 saves, 10 clean sheets. Uh, above an average of 7 uh, match rating as well for him and Alex Palmer, which is quite not unheard of, but it's um, it's not common for goalkeepers to get an average match rating of 7.0 something and above. Quite impressive stuff. Uh, Max O'Leary is our only League One representative. 82 saves and 11 clean sheets. Hasn't managed ab above an average of 7 match rating, but that's not too unimpressive because neither do our championship goalkeepers either. Uh, and, and one of those has kept 15 clean sheets. I am, of course, talking about Kiko Casilla of Leeds United. He's only made 70 saves, which I thought was a little bit strange, actually. It's quite low. It's the lowest among all our goalkeepers but it's the most clean sheet, so he must have a pretty decent defence in front of him. And our final goalkeeper, Bryce Samba of Nottingham Forest, 99 saves, 12 clean sheets, and has just about, if you round up, has scraped an average match rating of 7. So there we go. Uh, we're going to move on to the defence now. And I've tried to, to choose a, a sort of even amount of uh, League 2, League 1 championship. Starting things off with Harry Pickering. 79 tackles, 32 interceptions and 50 clearances. Uh, 7.32 average match rating. That is our second highest in our complete list of defenders. Our highest is this guy, Charlie... I want to say good, but I've got a feeling he's just good. But I'm going to say good because I went to school with someone who was named good. Anyway... 251 clearances is mightily impressive, and it's the most in the league, and that's why I've chosen him. I'm not going to try and say this guy's uh, surname, because, let's be honest, I won't pronounce that correctly. His first name's Michael. We'll call him Michael. He's got 167 clearances, as well as uh, several uh, interceptions and tens of tackles as well. Uh, definitely deserves to be there based on that. Uh, Robert Dickey, 32 tackles. 87 interceptions and 158 clearances. Very impressive stuff. 26 blocked shots in there as well. That is pretty impressive. Not as many as our next player, though, and that is Joe Worrell. Two Worrells in this team of the season prediction, and I've had to record this about four times because I keep getting confused. 189 clearances, which is impressive, but 48 blocked shots more than any other player in our list. And uh, that looks like a decent card. Perry NG is someone that I wanted to take a little bit more time to talk about because he has uh, gone up for a vote in the community, but I didn't include him in yesterday's video. Not that I don't think he deserves it. I just think that they should give him an EFL team of the season instead of including him in, in the community vote. Because let's be honest, apart from crew fans, no one's going to vote for him. So he's not going to get it, even though he deserves to be there. So... He's got 107, no, sorry, not 100, 1,719 accurate passes, which is unbelievably impressive, but not as impressive as Tim Ream, who is a centre-back, but he has the most accurate passes, not in the league, but in Europe, 2,000. 300 with an 89.53, which if you're rounding up is 90% pass accuracy. That is insane. Uh, moving on to Ebu Adams, 95 tackles, 51 interceptions and 42 uh, clearances. Yes, he's a midfielder, but I chose him for his defensive prowess. Doesn't look like a great card, sure. Hopefully EA boosts the defending up more than I've done there. Uh, Grimes, again chosen for his defensive actions. 110 tackles, which is the most in our list of players 57 interceptions and 47 clearances of course he's not going to have that many clearances if he plays in midfield 18 block shots as well with an average match rating of 7.27 quite impressive moving on to cash once more even though he's a midfielder at least in fifa I chose him for his defensive actions. Uh, 101 tackles, 52 interceptions and 100 clearances. I'm not going to claim to know an awful lot about the championship. Maybe he played right wing back. You have to let me know. Uh, Wintle up next. And uh, he is 
again, he's been chosen for midfield prowess. He's a CDM. Not sure whether he would have played maybe further back, but 1,800 accurate passes. Not the highest uh, percentage, 81% there, but still definitely worth a shout. Uh, we're going to talk now about David Worrell. This guy has the most key passes out of all of the players in the list. 100 key passes. That is so, so important to, uh, to his team and so impressive as well. 11 assists for him. Whiteman, uh, four big chances created, only one assist, but 1,758 accurate passes with 49 key passes in amongst those and a very high 7.31 average match rating. Very impressive. Maguire of Sunderland, uh, nine assists, uh, 79 key passes and the highest average match rating of... Nearly anyone in the entire team of the season prediction, 7.46. Moving on to Fraser. Uh, he's got 11 assists this season, 72 key passes, which is quite impressive. And our final player to be mentioned from League One. So far, not crazy high-rated cards. There are some really nice cards in here, though. And next up, we have one of those, and that is Pereira. Uh, Pereira of West Brom has got 12 assists. Obviously, several goals to his name as well. 1,050 accurate passes and 84 key passes with an average match rating of 7.35. He is by far the best player so far. Not the best player in total because we are going to ramp it up a little bit going forward. But that is a very, very nice looking card. Eliasson uh, of uh, Brentford up next with 12 assists. Terrible amount of accurate passes with 242. I mean, it's just not an awful lot at all, but very, very high up there with his assists. So I can definitely see him being included. Uh, Doyle, and into the strike as we go. Uh, Doyle with uh, 25 goals, uh, more than anyone else on our list. Very impressive stuff. And um, some, some nice high-rated um, average match ratings in there as well, 7.31. We're going to move on now to Porter. Uh, Chris Porter has got himself 12 goals this season. He, he doesn't have like an awful lot of like successful dribbles. He's got quite a few big uh, missed chances in there as well. But a very impressive conversion rate of 30%, which is, is actually quite high considering. Up next is a guy that I'm going to mispronounce the name of. I just know it. Is it Ivan Tony? If I'm saying that wrong... I apologize because I have no idea. Either way, he's got 24 goals, which is the second highest uh, goal scored on our list. Uh, he's got uh, 21 successful dribbles, which doesn't sound like an awful lot. But again, it's not that uh, far away from the highest. Well, I say it, it, it is, but from the second highest then, should we say. So quite impressive, 112 total shots as well. Uh, moving on to another guy that I can't pronounce the name of. What is it with these names? 15 goals this season for Blackpool, though. Uh, Amand is his first name. We'll call him Amand. Um, 64 total shots, only a 23% conversion rate, but still a very high average match rating of 7.27. Uh, Matty Taylor up next, 13 goals. Uh, only eight successful dribbles, not very good at all, but a conversion rate of 32.5%, which is the highest on our list. So pretty good there. Our highest rated player is going to be Alexander Mitrovic. 23 goals so far this season. Uh, 91 total shots. Only a conversion rate of 25%. But still 23 goals is mightily impressive. 100% deserves to be there. I'm not sure whether EA will go that crazy with the card. I do really like it though. Some great physical stats and some great finishing stats. But you know we, we can only hope really. Let's move on. Uh, to our penultimate player, Ollie Watkins, 22 goals very closely on the heels of Alexander Mitrovic. There is another Brentford player that we could mention as well, but I have gone with uh, Ollie Watkins. I can't imagine they'll choose more than one. Uh, he's got the highest big chances missed stat, which isn't great, I know, but still uh, definitely uh, deserves to be there with 32% goal conversion and a bit of a player from left field as it were uh, I, I don't know how to say his name is it easy or ease uh, either way 12 goals right but 111 successful dribbles now technically speaking you could say that he is a uh, central attacking midfielder but either way I think he could just about make it in there. 7.33 average match rating. His conversion rate is not great. It's actually the lowest of all the players in this list with 18%, uh, 66 total shots. But the amount of completed or successful dribbles in there is quite impressive. And I thought that that wouldn't be a bad player to include right at the end. But that is going to do it for your list. I know, I know I've missed out someone. I know I have. But 
I've gone through as many of the players as I possibly could do uh, for, you know, most tackles and highest average match rate in games played. I've taken everything I could do into consideration. There is 100% chance that I've missed someone. I know I have. So feel free to let me know in the comments down below. And also know as well, of course, that I don't avidly watch the Championship League 1 and League 2 on a weekly basis and take it all in and write it down as it happens. I've literally just spent a few hours going through all the data and this is the list that I have. We'll see how many we get right when they release, or hopefully when they release the EFL Team of the Season on Friday. Uh, let me know what you thought of the list in the comments. Hit the like button if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you're new, of course. And until the next time, goodbye. Football Index. The game changed. Download the app now.